What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Steam Remote Play to stream your games from your cloud computer to any other device inside or even outside of your local network and home. Uh, before we get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to this channel, because if you're watching this, chances are you're not subscribed. Over 99% of you are not subscribed, uh, so if you'd like to learn more tech tips and tricks and cool stuff like this, um, and even some gaming once in a while, be sure to hit that sub button um, or that thanks button below. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial itself. Inside Steam, we're going to log into our main account on our main gaming computer. I have my other computer um, opened up over here, so I'll bring that in um, when we're ready. Uh, but let's move that out of the way for now. Let's go ahead and set up uh, the main computer side. We'll go to Steam and go to Settings. And we're going to go to Remote Play. So I've already got some set here, so I'm going to actually remove all of these and disable remote play altogether. That way we can start from scratch. Nothing else is in. My other computer is logged in, so it will show up here, but it's not going to be paired yet. So let's go ahead and enable remote play, and you're going to see the other device that you have logged in if you've logged in so far. If you haven't, it won't show up yet. That's okay. Um, we're going to go over the settings first. So we can allow direct connections and IP sharing, that's fine. And then we're gonna to go to advanced host options. So this is where we're gonna get into the kind of nitty gritty technical stuff, but it's gonna be really easy if you just, um, you know, follow closely and, and mainly know your GPU brand. That's all you really need to know. So play audio on host is, do you want audio to come out of your gaming computer speakers or your other devices speakers? So if you're playing on a phone, you might not want your, you know, home stereo or office speakers going off you might want the audio to come from your phone but if you're playing on a computer in the same room maybe you do want to use your computer speakers because they might be better and have better bass or something like that so um, you can choose whether you want it to play on the gaming computer the host or if you just want it to play on the other device uh, next is change desktop resolution to match the streaming client I used to not recommend this, and now I highly recommend it. So what this will do is if you're playing on a smaller screen, like a Chromebook, for example, that might be 720p. Um, but your computer at home might be running at 1080. What this will do is it'll set your computer screen to 720 so that it's only rendering what it needs to to display it perfectly on that screen you're playing on. By lowering the resolution, it also frees up more of your performance towards streaming so it can send a better quality stream and a higher frame rate to your device. So I highly recommend doing this, um, especially if you play on devices with smaller screens. If all your devices are the same size, like 1080, then you, know, you could leave it um, as is. Uh, use NVFBC capture on NVIDIA GPU. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, you can use this to speed it up. And then enable hardware encoding. You do want to enable this unless for some reason you have a crazy super high-end CPU and a really bad GPU. Maybe you might want to disable this and use software encoding. <coughs> but most people are going to want to use hardware encoding. I have an AMD GPU, so I'm using enable hardware encoding on AMD GPU. Um, if you have an NVIDIA, you're going to want to check NVIDIA. If you have an Intel iGPU, you're going to use this one, the integrated uh, processor, sometimes found on laptops. Um, but yeah, you want to enable hardware encoding because generally there's a chip on most GPUs that will um, allow you to grab a feed of the content and it can decode it separately um, so it doesn't affect your gaming as much. Um, number of software encoding threads, I leave this as automatic. You can choose to have all of the threads used for encoding but you do risk the um, chance of slowing down performance of your machine uh, since your game also needs these threads. So we're not going to use that. Um, we're we're going to use automatic in, in our case so it can figure out which ones it needs. And then we do want to enable prioritized network traffic. If you have an advanced router that supports quality of service uh, streaming so it can choose, all right, if someone's watching um, Netflix or playing a game, we can prioritize that traffic. But if someone is just browsing the internet or downloading a large file, we might lower the, the prior prioritization of that traffic so that the uh, quality of the streaming experience isn't ruined. Um, so quality servant of service is built into a lot of routers. And if you prioritize this network traffic, it will assign it as priority traffic and hopefully let it get through faster, especially if you have a lot of devices using your network at once. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the setup here. Um, you want to turn on and log in the other computer. So let's go ahead and go over here and take a look. All right, so now on our second computer, we're going to log into the same account that we're logged into on the host computer and go to settings. 
and we want to enable remote play and you'll see computer connected. Um, you don't need a pair because Steam Link is a separate device that you pair to or if you're connecting with the app, you have to use Steam Link. If you're using a computer, all you have to do is log into the same device. Go ahead and press, I mean, log into the same account, press OK, and we're going to check one of the games. Let's go ahead and go to Dirt Rally 2. All right, so now we can stream our game. We can see that it's playing from desktop, or we can click on this computer to install it locally, or we can go back to desktop to stream it. Um, that's about all there is to it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Peace. What? You've never heard of stream savers, and you thought PewDiePie was the only YouTuber to make a game? I made a game too, and it's called Stream Savers, and it's available for pre-order right now for $9.99. And that's a great price.